guys, it's me again. I know I've been away forever. I'm trying so hard to get regular and it's so difficult. And I'm coming to you from outside in my garden because my house is full of boxes because I have a new roommate. Who knows, he might make an appearance later. He's out right now, but uh, he might come and say hi to you guys. So we're in nature and we're here to talk about some recent reads that I have been enjoying this month. I have five books to talk to you about. And you know, I just finished the last of them a couple of weeks back at the end of September. And it was only when I got to that point that I realized that they all have quite a lot in common. And one of those main things is that they all made me really fall in love with language again, which what more do you want from any book than to make you fall in love with language. Every word in most of these books is picked like a flower and it sings like music and I just think that that's kind of all you need in life from a book or at least it's all I need personally. So yeah, a lot of really good stuff to review this month so I'm excited to get to it. To start with we have a book that I talked about in my last book haul which I will link up here and down there. It is called Preparation for the Next Life by Atticus Lish. This was an amazing read and totally not what I was expecting in any way. We have Zhu Lei who is an undocumented Chinese immigrant and we have Skinner who is a recently returned veteran from the Iraq war who's really suffering from PTSD. They're both living in Queens and they meet and you kind of just get an unbiased view at their lives as they become friends, lovers, and uh, more if there's more than that. The main thing that I have to talk to you about in this book is not the story because I don't think that's the main thing. The main thing that stood out to me is the absolutely beautiful way that Atticus Lish manages to document this in-between space that both of our characters are living in. Skinner has no idea where he is, what his place in society is on his return from war, who he is when he's not on the battlefield and whether New York has any home for him really. Jule, as is probably obvious, is in this in-between space that you find yourself in as an immigrant with no papers, no privileges, nothing. She's working in these Chinese restaurants just trying to make headway. She's living in a sort of curtained off corner of a room trying to make friends whilst not really speaking the language and I think in this day and age and I know I said this about Americana but it's funny they they kind of gave me the same feelings I think in this day and age it's a very important book because I think Atticus Lish manages to set the scene of an America with all its failures. We, we have looks at the prison system, we have looks at the immigration system, we have looks at the American dream or lack of it. And it's a completely non-judgmental look at these people who are in these in-between spaces, which is exactly what we need, I think, in the current political climate. And it's a very non-didactic book that doesn't tell you how to feel. It kind of allows you to make your own judgments and draw your own conclusions. And I think that's a really brave thing to do, especially considering what it covers. One of the ways in which Lish manages to do this, which just blew my mind, I've never read anything like it, is that his use of language and specifically his use of staccato language. It's kind of like reading a stomp poem that lasts 400 and some pages. It, it just manages to draw you into the most minute details of descriptions of place, of descriptions of time, not so much descriptions of feeling, but there is so much feeling in this book. It's unbelievable. And this kind of discussion of the minutiae manages to complete itself in these sweeping panoramas of the systems that we're talking about here, which I don't know how he does it. And I highly recommend that you see for yourself what I'm talking about. I asterisked some of my favorite parts just because I think that no matter how many words I say about it, I can't convey what I'm talking about unless I read to you. So this is one of his descriptions of place, which I feel really draws us into the place, really shows us what it is to be lost and overwhelmed by, you know, colour, sound, all of those things that might overwhelm us in a new place. And I just think it's beautiful, so I'm going to let him speak. 
She started moving with the crowd, looking above their heads and seeing that she was going into a Chinatown, a thicket of vertical signs, the sales of sampans and junk, too many to read, a sing-song clamour rising, no English. There were loudspeakers and dedications and banners for Year of the Dog, voices all round her calling and calling, here, 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 come and see, someone spitting in the street, crying out and running along next to her, pushing and pleading, grabbing the sleeve of her jacket. They put flyers in her hands and she dropped them, missing teeth younger than they looked, illegals from the widow villages, body wash, foot rub, tie style shower, bus to Atlantic City. A neon sign for KTV turned on in the dusk. She saw the endless heads of strangers, the crew cut workmen, running crates of rapeseed out the back of a van. The feet coming, the sneakers everyone wore, the work boots, the spike heeled boots worn by the women. The square faced workmen smoking golden crane, wearing Gore-Tex, wearing military cast off. The women had black hair, black leather jackets, black purses, lion's manes of hair dyed orange, teased and spit and tinted. Faces glazed white with photo developer. She smelled the buckets and the hose. They were shoving by the scales. You give me a pound, you give me two for one, give me three. Be honest a little. So I think that kind of fast paced, detail heavy, kind of exhausting almost language is really an amazing tool that he uses to portray what uh, what it is that he wants to portray. And, I guess you can make your own decision on what it is he wants to portray, but I think that he's placing this slice of life of an underclass, really, in front of your eyes for you to deal with and for you to be kind of engulfed by in this sometimes really uncomfortable way. And I think that's, yeah, that's a really noble thing to do, I think, because without realizing it, I think a lot of the novels we read are kind of concerned with, you know, middle class, middle brow issues because, you know, the novel in itself, we, we are lucky enough to be able to read about whatever we want and have that privilege and have the privilege of language and of literacy. That sort of translates into a lot of the fiction that we read if we're not careful. And so I think the importance of that and the importance of, of placing a lot of voices on the page, a variety of voices, is undeniable. Did I even mention that he had PTSD? Two more important things that I wanted to mention about this book. One of them is um, its unsentimental portrayal of mental illness, which is not sugar-coated, not too much, not too little, just true, I guess of PTSD and specifically veterans PTSD, which if you're plugged into the right channels gets talked about quite a bit, but definitely not enough. I think overall, the book does a really good job at just making you aware of quite how all consuming and terrifying and awful it is to be a returning soldier with PTSD. Because it doesn't make it a central point and it's not trying to be preachy about it, it is, all the more successful in that regard. The second thing I took value in, I guess, both as a writer and as a reader, which is that I don't know if I like either of our main characters. There are definitely aspects of them that I didn't like, aspects of them, you know, that I saw myself in, maybe. Although, again, not with the help of Atticus Lish, which I think is a good thing. He was definitely not trying too hard to make sure that the readers identified with them but you did anyway which was lovely they were deeply flawed individuals and i think as i discussed in my last wrap up that's a really special thing when you manage to do that as a writer because it's very easy to make your characters the people that you wanted to be or the people that you think should exist alongside you it's very hard not to end up making you know mary janes and perfect people this book is so real and that doesn't stop at the descriptions of place or the descriptions of time it's also relevant to the characters and so i really aspire to be able to do that as a writer and i think that it was a challenging experience as a reader because you're kind of thrown in a million different directions both by the prose and by you know your your changing feeling towards the characters so i really i really took great value out of that preparation for the next life definitely gets a thumbs up from me oh shit you can't see this can you no. I mean, I can now. Yeah, I know. <laughs>
<laughs> read it for me, you weirdo. Secondly, we have Tristamania by J. Griffith. Whoa, okay. <clears throat> Don't laugh at me. Secondly, we have Tristamania by Jay Griffiths. This was the first book that I read of uh, Jay Griffiths. I gather that she's written quite a lot of non-fiction stuff, but I think I saw this on Jen's channel, and I remember being interested, but kind of forgetting about it. And then I was at the Institute of Contemporary Arts in London the other day to watch Louis Theroux's new movie obligatory Louis Theroux plug because I love Louis Theroux and it was an amazing movie and I laughed a lot. Everyone, if possible, go and see my Scientology movie because it is a classic and so, so good. But yeah, this was at the ICU and the ICU? ICA. <laughs> this was at the ICA and uh, I just had to pick it up because I walked past it and it was screaming at me, you have to buy me, you have to buy me, I'm so beautiful. Because, you guys, look though, just look, just look. Who would not want a book this beautiful? And it doesn't even stop there, because then you open it, and this is what it looks like. And you basically feel like you're exploring the night sky, and you haven't even left your bed. <laughs> I had no idea what I was going into with this one, other than the fact that I knew that it was a non-fiction book about manic depression. This tells the story of a year in the life of Jay Griffiths, who went through uh, one of the worst manias and f ensuing depressions that she'd ever experienced. And she wrote during that time, which is an incredibly noble and terrifying and brave thing to do in the first place. And she not only wrote during that time, she wrote an absolutely beautiful, poetic, lyrical book. And so that continued my foray into, um, I guess, my rekindled love affair with language because man, does this woman know how to write. So we follow her in this horrifying, experience unending terrible i guess beautiful in some senses not that she romanticizes romanticizes it at all mania can sometimes feel like a beautiful thing to the sufferer and something that they do do not want to get out of because you know you kind of feel on top of the world she leads us through this experience sparing us no detail and through metaphor and poetry and specifically there's a lot of talk around Mercury as a god because you know Mercury if any god is relevant to the illness of manic depression it is Mercury it is a totally and completely mercurial illness and so we have a lot of symbolism there's a lot of talk of the tempest if you're if you're a fan of Shakespeare's the tempest you will find yourself in this it was a really intense reading experience I think you've got to be ready for it it kind of enclutches you is that a word in a in a in its decline and I have a lot of admiration for her and and for what she went through and how she got out of it. You follow her once she's on the up again and she manages to go on the Santiago to Compostela trail to try and find her mind again, I guess, is how she puts it. And yeah, you, it's, I had never thought that I would be led in uh, with such candidness to someone's mind and it's it's an incredibly exposing thing to do. Even without knowing anything about her, I feel like I learnt things both about the disease, about the words used to describe the disease. The very title of this book, Tristamania, is how she prefers to refer to her condition. It's another word for manic depression, which I didn't know, that taught me something. I did get a little bogged down towards the middle, I guess, in, in all of the mercury-related imagery. It, gets pretty academic and pretty heavy but I think it demands perseverance and it's perseverance well spent. Is that a thing? Well, perseverance well spent? I guess. I don't know how many other books give you this kind of view of mental illness where you're you drown right into it as opposed to having this kind of bird's eye view that allows you to stay 
an observer. You're definitely, definitely not an observer and I think that is that adds something to the discourse and specifically the literary discourse surrounding mental illness and manic depression. I recommend that people pick this up. I think you have to be in the right mental state yourself. So exercise self-care and make sure that you are okay um, to be embarking on this journey with her. But uh, I think it's, it's, it's both educational and incredibly inspiring from a uh, writing point of view and um, lyrical and yeah I, I'm glad I read it I and I'm also glad that I went in blind because I probably wouldn't have picked it up otherwise so thanks Jay Griffiths for teaching me some things and uh, and teaching me some things about language too it's really absolutely beautiful editing vix here just checking in um thanks so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it i actually ended up with over an hour of footage talking about the five books so i've decided that i'm going to split everything into two videos so you've just seen part one of two and um your second part will be coming in the next couple of days which is epic timing because i've been away for so long and this way you get a double whammy so i'm busy editing and i'll see you really soon thanks for watching bye